everyone. This video blog is about panic attacks and how to manage them. So with the current crisis, I think we're all um, probably experiencing a, lot, experiencing a lot of anxiety and even panic attacks. But first of all, I just want to say something about how I've noticed, including myself, that we all adapt to this crisis um, in different ways and at different speeds. And I think it's really important that we don't judge each other, but actually just respect that everybody is different and that we do come to terms with what's happening in general at the moment in our own way. Some people uh, were ahead of the game, some weren't. And I think we've all probably gone through our own inner meltdowns at various times and various stages, including denial, um, thinking what governments are doing is not helpful. But what I'm, what I'm really trying to say is that we are all different and try and show everybody um, compassion and understanding because we're all struggling with this, including myself. And it's really important to allow people the process of coming to terms and working out how they manage this situation in their way, in what's best for them. It may not be what's best for you, but it's what's working for them. It has to be what's working for you. So I just wanted to say that at the start, because we all kind of have an inner set of rules about how life should be or how others should behave if you hear yourself getting into the shoulds as i call them then you're getting into judgment um, there's no should for anyone we're all just doing our best at the moment so please try and show um, understanding and empathy for everyone as they find their way through this crisis now let's get down to today's subject which is about panic attacks. Um, I'm, um, I, I'm someone who has in the past experienced panic attacks, including nighttime panic attacks, which can be particularly frightening. And um, I just want to say a little bit about what, a, what, what the difference is between an anxiety attack, which is no less than a panic attack, and what is a panic attack. So, with an anxiety attack, we probably feel fearful, we feel apprehensive, we may feel that our heart is racing, uh, short of breath, but it's usually with an anxiety attack, it can be more short lived and we can kind of get ourselves back onto a kind of more realistic way of thinking more quickly. Now, especially when whatever it is that has triggered that particular anxiety, kind of we understand what it is and we let go of it um, whereas a panic attack um, it doesn't particularly come in response to something that is happening or stressing us it's like it's, it's unprovoked it's unpredictable and when we have a panic attack what happens is the hormone adrenaline floods into our bloodstream and it puts our body into this fight flight high alert. Our heartbeat gets faster and it sends more mus um, blood to the muscles so we can run away if we need to. Your breathing can become fast and shallow. Um, we take in more oxygen at these times and our, our blood sugar can spike. So this is why panic attacks can last longer and in many ways be more frightening. When I was training as a psychotherapist many years ago, uh, one of the assignments we had to do where I trained uh, was be attached to a psychiatric unit for a considerable amount of time. And I think I was for two years actually, and work with um, a psychiatrist on his ward rounds, basically in an observance capacity to learn and to comment if asked. Um, now, I always remember the psychiatrist that I was attached to, a lovely, lovely man, an Egyptian psychiatrist, 
uh, who will have retired a long time ago uh, in Orpington in, in, in Kent and really lovely man. I learned so much from him. And I remember a woman came in one day and saying that she keeps suffering from these panic attacks and she was so scared that she was going to die. The thing that really stayed with me and has helped me in recent years when I have too suffered panic attacks is that he said, let me assure you, no one dies from a panic attack. Now, let's just stay with panic attacks. With a panic attack, it will last the time it lasts. Now, one of the ways that you can um, manage it is first of all, recognize that that's what's happening. Because the more you fight it, the more difficult it will be for your body to calm down in this state. Because what we have to do is be aware of it, try and breathe, breathe deeply, breathe slowly. And the recognition that we're having a panic attack means that if our understanding of panic attacks is good, panic attacks have a beginning, a middle and an end. This panic attack will end. Okay. Mindfulness is really useful in a panic attack to just try and ground yourself. Find a focus, an object, describe it to yourself, get out of the fear and into the kind of intellect part of your brain and go, oh, okay, um, this is an interesting book. What does it say? Um, oh, okay, it's the game of life and how to play it. I wonder if there's... Now, at that point, I want to say sometimes we can't even do that. We are so caught in the fear that it seems impossible to uh, even focus on something to help us relax. Now, what we have to do is recognize that because we are in this fight flight state in a, in a panic attack, you can give yourself permission to run away. Now, the way I've managed that and, and what has worked for me, and I remember it happened to me once in a hotel. Um, it, I woke up in the middle of the night. I have no idea why I had this panic attack. There were things going on in my life which were stressors. And at night when we're sleeping, what the brain is trying to do in the unconscious is to sort through all these um, difficulties that we're trying to cope with and kind of calm them down so that it's trying to get them into some sort of order. And often what's happened when we have a, a nighttime panic attack is that something has just popped into our conscious and woken us up. So we wake up with the fear, the racing heart, and you're just thinking, how when I'm asleep can my heart be racing like this? How can I be short of breath? Am, am I dying? Why have I got chest pains? Now, what I did at that point, because I didn't know why I was having this panic attack, but I actually gave myself permission to run away. It was three o'clock in the morning and I gave myself permission. Um, okay, I can get up, I can pack and I can leave. So I thought about that. I lay in bed for a while on my back and just thought about that. And I thought, oh, okay. So that means packing and that means going down to reception in the middle of the night when no one's going to be around. And that means then I've got to get in my car and I've got to drive to where I get myself home. And I thought, oh, I don't know, that sounds too exhausting. So what I did then was give myself permission to just kind of stay with that. And if I really wanted to do that later, I could do it. I thought, right, let's see. Even if I'm awake all night, it doesn't matter. Um, I can still do it in the morning or I can do it in an hour's time. So that is one way that one can cope with it by accepting it, understanding it, and also uh, by giving yourself permission to run. And in my experience, most of the times we don't. We actually sit it out because if you sit it out, you actually then discover that you survive it. 
And that is such a relief because when it happens again, and it probably will, and in my experience it has, uh, I know what's happening. And I will sit down and I will sit with it. I may call someone up and say, look, this is what's happening to me. Can you just kind of ground me or talk me through it? And that can be very helpful. And I have my own selection of really, really great friends who understand how um, I'm human and can go through all the ranges of emotions that everyone else does. So that's how I cope with it. Now, there are other modalities that you can use, and I just want to just mention one or two of them. One, for instance, is through hypnotherapy and relaxation and listening to the relaxation tapes you can get on tapes, that dates me, <laughs> the relaxation um, tracks you, you, you find on YouTube. Um, th there's another modality which I'm trained in, which is EFT, emotional freedom technique. And I've tried that successfully when I'm having a panic attack, where you tap on the meridian points and you talk your way through the, the problem and, and get yourself out of it. And there's many people out there who you can go to who can help you specifically with EFT. So that's another way. Also talking it through with a really good, effective, active listening counselor who will talk you through it and help you to understand and not get completely overwhelmed by it. So as I've said before, I'm always here um, to help in any way I can. And I do want to say thank you so much. And a lot of you are watching at the moment. Bless you, thank you so much for watching. And I will come back to all of your comments and I will answer them over the next little while. Uh, thank you for the people who have been sending me private messages of encouragement. And, you know, that's great because I get really nervous doing this amazingly. Uh, I really do. Uh, but I'm trying to use the talents and skills that are unique to me to give them to you. For some of you, what I say will be right. For some of you, it won't. And that's fine because we're all different and we have to find, as I said, the, the way, the method, the person that is right for us that we can listen to and feel we gain something from it. So I'm going to leave you with three thoughts. One is positive thought for the day. Try and be mindfully aware of how often you judge others and replace that with wishing them the best of everything. Secondly, remember, we're all on our own path. Our path is not right or wrong. To some people, it might seem wrong what we're doing. We're doing what is best for us. It's our chosen path and their chosen path. Respect each other's choices. And finally, on the final note, as an astrologer, as some of you will know I am and have been for 30 years on and off, and I've now decided to actually put myself out there as an astrologer, there is a, there is a new moon today in Aries. And this is the, the first new moon of what we call the astrological new year. It's the, it's the spring equinox. We actually had the exact equinox last week. I think it was on Friday when um, the sun actually moved into Aries. So the new moon is in Aries. This is a chance for new beginnings. And um, if you want to understand more about that, you can go to my Astrologer and Life Coach page. And I will be back with another video blog. Uh, not quite sure what the topic will be. Perhaps you can send me suggestions of what you'd like to understand more about. And that will help me in the planning, as I am aiming to do these every day. Um, and there may be days when I, when I can't or don't or, but to the best of my ability, I'm hoping to do them every day. So bless you all. Thank you so much. Please do what your governments are telling you and stay in and stay well. Thank you.